All right, so with that lesson in morality, I think we can conclude the graphical terminology portion of this lecture and move on to the Bayesian networks and causal graphs portion of the lecture. So let's start with no causality at all, just statistical modeling. We'll see that this is a theme throughout the course, statistical models versus causal models. But for now, we're, going to, we're just going to start with statistical modeling. So that means that we're modeling the joint distribution over n variables here, x1 through xn. And just from the chain rule of probability that always applies, we get this decomposition here. If we write that out for n equals 4, then we get this specific factorization. p of x1 times p of x2 given x1 times p of x3 given x2 and x1 times p of x4 given everything before it. So if we want to model this distribution, we need to model at least one of the factors. So at least the p of x4 given everything before it factor. and if all of these variables are binary, say, this isn't important for the argument, but let's just take them to be binary, then we can write a model for p of x4 given x3, x2, and x1 using this table. Okay, so to model this factor, we have to learn each of these parameters, these alpha 1 through alpha 8. And that's because there's three different variables that we're conditioning on each of which can take on two possible values. So we end up with two to the three parameters. For general n, we end up with two to the n minus one parameters for the largest factor, for the factor that we're conditioning on everything before it. Okay, so just in statistical modeling, we already have a problem, and that's that we have an exponential number of parameters. If we wanna model these distributions, with these tables right here. And this is because we're modeling the dependence of x4 on every other variable in the distribution. This is where Bayesian networks come into play. If I were to draw a graph for which variables each variable depends on, then I could get something more local like this. So here, x4 only depends on x3. So maybe we don't need to model the dependence of x4 on all of the variables, but just on x3. So we'll see how this helps us out shortly, but first let's discuss the local Markov assumption, which is, given its parents in the directed acyclic graph, a node is independent of all of its non-descendants. So in this example that we just saw, Here's a graph for it, and here's the factorization that we are to get from the chain rule of probability. In this example, we can actually simplify this last factor because x4, given its parent x3, is independent of every other variable in the graph, all of its non-descendants, and x4 doesn't have any descendants. So because it's independent of every other variable in the graph, we can simplify this last factor to just p of x4 given x3. Say we were to further remove edges from this graph, so if we were to remove the edge from x1 to x2 and the edge from x2 to x3, then my question for you is, how will the factorization further change now that I have removed these edges? I'll give you just a couple seconds to answer, so feel free to pause the video if you'd like. The answer is that now that x2 doesn't have x1 as a parent, it will no longer condition on x1. So that factor p of x2 given x1 will just become p of x2. And similarly, x2 is no longer a parent of x3, so the factor for x3 will no longer have x2 behind the conditioning bar. So here is the simplification. And we give this example to build up your intuition for a more general concept known as the Bayesian network factorization, which is the following. The joint distribution factorizes as the product of 
factors where there's one factor for each variable, and each factor is just the probability of that variable conditioned on its parents in the graph. And here you might notice that I'm using the word variable in a distribution kind of interchangeably with nodes in the graph. And that's something that you'll commonly see from both me in this course and outside of this course. It's normal to just talk about the variables in the distribution with the same labels as the nodes in the graph. Just talk about those interchangeably. If you remember from a couple slides ago, the way we actually did the example in the last slide is using the local Markov assumption. And then the, that example, we generalized it in this slide to the Bayesian network factorization. So we were giving the intuition for this implication that the local Markov assumption implies the Bayesian network factorization. And it turns out that the Bayesian network factorization also implies the local Markov assumption. So these two related properties are actually equivalent. And you can see proofs for this kind of stuff, for example, in chapter three of Kohler and Friedman, which is a probabilistic graphical modeling book. Another important assumption that we will be using when we write graphs in this course is the minimality assumption. The minimality assumption has two parts. So the first part is just the local Markov assumption. To see why we're not satisfied with just the local Markov assumption, consider this graph, x to y. And this graph permits different kinds of distribution. So one kind of distribution is this factorization here. The joint equals p of x times p of y given x. And the local Markov assumption for this graph also permits the fully factorized distribution where, so that's where p of x comma y equals p of x times p of y. In distributions that factorize that way, x and y are completely independent, right? So even though there's an arrow from x to y, x and y don't depend on each other. And that's not really what we want. It, it doesn't seem very intuitive. So the minimality assumption also adds this second part, which is that adjacent nodes in the DAG are dependent. And now that we've added this second part to the local Markov assumption, this graph x with an edge to y no longer permits distributions that factorize as p of x times p of y. It no longer permits distributions where x and y are independent. Rather, now that we're using the minimality assumption when we're talking about graphs, if we wanted to talk about that distribution where it's fully factorized, we would need to use this graph, x, y, without any edges in the graph. So if we were just using the local Markov assumption, then we could represent this fully factorized distribution using either the graph where it's x and y and there's no edge, or using the graph where it's x and y and they're connected with an edge. Both of those would be graphs that this distribution is Markov with respect to. This distribution satisfies the local Markov assumption with respect to both of those graphs. You can think of the minimality assumption as just giving us a way to select which of those graphs we're going to use to represent this fully factorized distribution. It means that we're going to use the graph that has the minimal number of edges that this distribution is Markov with respect to. Okay, so you can think of this minimality assumption as kind of like expressing our preferences for what kinds of graphs we'll use to describe different distributions. So the two assumptions we've seen so far are the Markov assumption and the minimality assumption. And... The Markov assumption gets us to statistical independencies. It lets us read off statistical independencies about a distribution given a corresponding directed acyclic graph. Then the minimality assumption, when we add in that second part, we get statistical dependencies. So we can read off statistical dependencies in the graph at least between adjacent nodes.
So statistical dependencies can get a bit more complex when there's multiple paths between nodes. But we won't get into that until much later in the course when we see causal discovery. Okay, so now I have two questions for you to recall the answers to. The first is, how is the local Markov assumption related to the Bayesian network factorization? And the second is, what are the two parts of the minimality assumption, and what do we gain with the second part? Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a bit of time now to recall the answers to these questions.